All right, let's move to Nebraska and Indiana here. Joe, the first time that we get to talk about Indiana on mm. Rafino and Joe show. The, no, technically second time, but this is the first world game preview that we've had of Indiana and under Coach Signetti. Get the SIGs out. The Italians are back in the building. You cannot convince me not to be an Indiana homer right now, Joe. The Italians are here. Yeah, look, I, I'm in on the Indiana hype right now because of the way that they're playing. And they, they haven't exactly been, like, super stressed by their schedule. But they're not just beating up on a bunch of G5 teams. They have had pretty big separation against most of the Big Ten opponents that they've faced. I mean, they, they kicked the crap out of a Northwestern team that smoked Maryland. I mean, they, they are a very, very explosive offense that's one of the best in the country. 515 total yards a game. Uh, 53% on third down is pretty nuts to see. And then they're also right now out gaining on the ground, just running the football 200 yards per game to 83 that they're allowing to opponents. Curtis Rourke has been the perfect player for this offensive quarterback. He's completing 73% of his passes. He's only got two picks on the year to his 14 touchdowns. And they have got a great uh, receiver tandem in Elijah Surratt and Omar Cooper Jr., I give Coach Signetti a ton of props, and I've said this a million times, and I bring it up in any opportunity that somebody brings up Indiana. I played against this man when I was at URI, and this dude, when he was at Elon and he was at JMU, kicked the shit out of us. There, he is the only coach that I have faced in the times where he was at two different schools that I can say, that's a football coach who knew how to kick us, kick our ass in every single facet of the field. We, we played other teams. We played them close. Sometimes we got blown out. Kurt Signetti always knew how to just beat up on anybody that showed a sign, a slight sign of weakness. I don't know what happens in this Nebraska game for, for certain because this is their first like legitimate, legitimate test. But I'm leaning in Indiana because they've got this game at home. When you think of Indiana, I think people have not really looked at them from a national perspective yet. Like you, you know. Because, Joe, we haven't had moments where we've had to talk about them. We know that they're undefeated. We're It's like, and I don't mean this with any disrespect to Indiana fans, we're keeping them at arm's length but paying attention to what they're doing. I, I think that the analogy that I would give is like me as a parent having a conversation with a friend of mine, knowing that my son Ben is standing right here. Like I'm cognizant of him being right by my side, but I'm having a conversation. You know, mm -hmm. like I'm focusing on something else but I know that they're still there. Now, I talked about a couple of weeks ago when I watched the Indiana UCLA film, you know, a team that I cover separately from this. They, you know, the, we, they had a common opponent. Joe, I was, I was blown away by some things that they did offensively when, like, they played UCLA and, and other stops and other games that they've had. However, it's not been offensively that I've been more surprised by. Joe, I think when you have an offensive-minded guy or a defensive-minded guy, you always lean when the coach is going into that side of the football, right? Joe, they're six in the country in defense, in total defense. And I, I know that that could be a little fugazi, but this is Indiana that we're talking about. This isn't. Yeah. This is like a full rebuild that we thought that this man was going to go after, uh, go in there and have to do. When I look at Indiana. There's nothing that I don't think that I've seen on film from them yet that <clears throat> I thought was bad. You know, like maybe they have some units that were maybe average. You know what I mean? Like, okay, well, like the safety play at times was kind of average in this in this quarter or or this half. Or I don't think the running backs hit the hole effect effectively in this quarter or this half. But I thought I, I think that they're just good. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know how to pinpoint it. I think I think that Indiana, for what it's worth, even offensively or defensively, number one, they play fundamentally sound. And number two, they have certainly taken their coaches and what they've been doing. And to your point on looking at the Nebraska game and this being the ultimate test for them, this is going to be the more fis most physical defense that they've seen. And it's yeah. not remotely close. And I'm wondering how an offense that's been this explosive at times reacts to a defense that's been able to stuff the run in Nebraska. I Look, Raiola has gotten a lot of – I mean, Joe, he's got a lot of starts under his belt now. I mean, when you get start getting six, seven, eight starts, you're like, hey, man, you're not a young pup in college football anymore. Like, you're here. Joe, I look at Nebraska, and I, I think they have some deficiencies. They're still rebuilding. 
but man, they're just so physical. And I don't know when I look at this game if Indiana, like they have, I, I want to see them test a bit against somebody this physical. And that's where I stand on this. It's like I look at, I look at Nebraska and they're 13th in the country in total defense. Okay. And in the run game, they're seventh in stopping the run. That's a physical front seven. Okay. And they've been physical. And we talked about that after the Colorado game. I just don't know if they, if if we get in a situation here where Indiana is scoring at will, I don't know if Nebraska can keep up with them. So it's gonna again, we we talked earlier about styles make fights. You better keep the ball away from Indiana because if you don't, you're gonna lose if you're Nebraska. Where I'm really super focused, Blake, is the lines of scrimmage for what you just talked about. And like one of the things that like stood out to me the most, and we knew this from now, watching Nebraska play Illinois and watching them play against Colorado, they have a really underrated front seven on defense. Ty Robinson and James Williams have been super productive for that front in getting after the quarterback. As a team, they have 20 team sacks through the games they've played, which is a tremendous number. But the, the reason why I'm focused on that matchup is because Indiana on the other, other side, they have been elite on their offensive line. And to your point, it's kind of like with Rutgers. Like Rutgers statistically has been one of the best offensive lines in the country, but they don't necessarily have a first-round pick playing on that, that O-line. They're just playing really well together. This has been Kurt Signetti's whole thing is that he's not an offensive or a defensive mastermind. He's a motivator. If that's what his archetype would be in college football 25 is that he's motivating his guys, he's getting him locked in, he's getting him buy, to buy in to play at a high level. Their offensive line has accomplished that to this point. They're keeping pressure off of Curtis Rourke Nebraska is going to need to get after him because I don't think to this point he has been challenged. This could be that first opportunity that we see is this Indiana offensive line for real. And then on the flip side, you mentioned the way that Indiana's defense is playing. Michael Kamara has been one of the best pressure producing edge rushers in the country. He's got five sacks, seven and a half mm -hmm. tackles for loss, and then all these advanced analytics. He's a top performer. I lean Indiana, as I said, at the current moment. Because of the final thing that you brought up, Blake, I think that if there is a little bit of separation, this Indiana team, if they're down by 10, they can score in bunches. And then if they need to pull, put together a quick lead and they want to go up 14, they can score in bunches. I don't know if I can say the same thing about Nebraska that has been cooled over the past few weeks and has not been as potent as we were hoping that they would be. Well, look, they're coming off a bye. I think the last time that the nation remember seeing Nebraska was that overtime loss to Illinois where Raiola took a really bad sack. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I guess I'd ask you, how have you how have you seen Raiola through the first, what, five games of the season? I mean, the last time we saw him, he was 13 of 27, 48%, 134 yards, no touchdowns in the pick against Rutgers. And... You know, Joe, I, I, I think about this Indiana team when you just talked about them defensively. Look, Raiola could be in some trouble here, right? Like, he he, he could be – like, you're going to hit start hitting some stretch of games here. Like, hey, man, this is big boy football. Now, I think the kid's too talented. I think in a bye yeah. week he bounces back. Man, I'm really interested about this uh, about this situation with Nebraska. Uh, but I, I, I agree with you. I think that just Indiana might be a little bit too explosive – but, man, if they keep the ball away from them and play physical. I mean, Joe, I could definitely see a world where Nebraska's D-line gets after this Indiana offensive line because we have not seen them play somebody that can really get after it in the running game. And I could see them winning a physical football game. Maybe this is the Indiana test. I don't know. But I just think they're too explosive offensively. And I, I, I don't know if they can keep up. To talk about Royola before we move on to the next game, Blake, I think that we're starting to see some of those freshman moments where he's kind of coming back down to earth. And, and like the Illinois game is a perfect example. He was pressured a ton against a really good defensive coordinator in a really good front seven. And that was where some of the mistakes that I alluded to uh, early on in the year to be aware of with a young guy like this, that's very improvisational. That's the Patrick Mahomes archetype. He's going to take risks that are not going to pan out, but plain and simple. I mean, the kid's freaking gifted. He, if there is a freshman or just a young player in general, they could flip the switch and have a crazy game and they win the game because of him, because he just dots up a defense. It's Dylan Raiola. They don't have bad receivers either. Isaiah Nair has been a, a productive player at multiple stops in his career and was kind of ascending and returning to prominence up until that Illinois game. And he had a pretty good game against Illinois. Um, I would pay attention to that. Like if there is an X factor and I, this is not being 
me being hyperbolic. This is not me over-exaggerating and just buying into the Raiola hype. If Raiola pops off, he is the only guy in this football game that will be on the field that could just take over and win his team the football game. Joe, they've only scored over 30 points once this season. It's not like Colorado defensively is that good. Ah, well, I mean, their run defense is better than people give them eh, credit for. Eh. Okay. Joe, they're in the hundreds in, in run defense, Colorado is. I mean, are they not? I, do, I don't know that for certain because – Well, it's their secondary or their or – their, It's their secondary because their run defense statistically is like – I forget where they where they stand, but a lot you of Colorado need, fans love bringing that up. Joe, you're five games in the season. You hadn't scored 30 points once. It's a concern. It is a concern stepping into this situation. It's and a 31 it, it, points, Indiana, you weren't in the football game. There, I, I mean, I mean, it's just the truth. I mean, so look, man, we'll we'll see. I, easier said than done here. But Kurt Signetti, man, the Italians. I mean, make Italian coaching great again. That's how I need it. <laughs> Bet online remains your top spot for all of your live betting action and contests. NFL, college football, UFC, NHL are all in full swing. Bet online is your number one source for wagering news, odds, trends, and predictions with both desktop and mobile access at any time. Head to Bet Online today and use promo code Believe. That's B L E A V for fifty percent off your first deposit that is a 50 percent welcome bonus bet online where the game starts